Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing another movie review. This movie is a horror film from Latvia, Latvian Language English Subs, released in the year 2014, directed by Ike Karapetian, and this film is called The Man in the Orange Jacket. So The Man in the Orange Jacket opens up with this guy that has recently been told that he is no longer needed at his place of work. He, like hundreds of others, have been let go because their, their roles have been seen as redundant. And so this guy holds a lot of resentment towards his boss and his wife that live in a luxurious mansion in the rural lands. So he decides to go to the mansion, stalk them, and he ends up murdering them both brutally and storing their bodies in the basement. So now he's going to live the high life. He wants to know what it's like to walk in their shoes, eat their food, drink their wine, and go out to places that he could never have imagined. And so this is a very new life, and it's a very comfortable life, but that level of comfort is going to be put to the test when strange occurrences start to happen within this mansion that make him second-guess his sanity and believe that maybe he is going insane, or in fact there is someone else in there with him that is playing with him. And so whether or not that's the case, something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on The Man in the Orange Jacket. This is a very, very new film. When it comes to Latvian cinema, I am not experienced with this, so again, I was very, very excited to see what this Latvian horror film could serve up. Now, when it comes to a new country, maybe horror is not exactly the best genre to start with because it's not exactly a well-respected genre, and so maybe coming into a drama it actually would have given me a lot more belief that I was getting myself into a really good experience. But, you know, Latvian horror, whenever there's a new country, being the film fanatic that I am from foreign cinema, I had to take the opportunity. So I really wanted to watch this film. I thought the trailer looked interesting. It only went for 70 minutes. And so if it was going to be a terrible film, at least it was a movie that wouldn't really, I wouldn't have to put up with for very long. And so coming with a very fresh slate, nothing to really compare it against, I was going to give this movie every opportunity to impress me. And impressed me it did. It actually impressed me a lot more than I thought it would. And I was surprised by the level of competency that the man in the orange jacket possesses. Now straight away, this movie captured my attention through the visuals and through the soundtrack. This is a very, very haunting and a very, very uncomfortable experience, and that is amplified through the visuals and through the, the soundtrack. So it's a movie that attacks you on by the senses, is that it's a psychological experience. This is a movie that reminded me of a Finnish horror film called Sauna, which is one of my favourite horror films of all time. It just had that really dark atmosphere and that very brooding intensity that slowly grabs you and it just won't let go. And so the 70 minute runtime, it goes very, very quickly, but I thought as though it was a really, really fun 70 minutes, it's because this is a movie that demonstrates what made, you know, Scandinavian horror and even shades of you know Alfred Hitchcock in the psychological suspense as to whether or not this guy is going insane or in fact he is not alone and that's something there is an uncertain danger that is lurking behind the door and the movie really plays on that and the movie does play on that in a way where I thought as though it was old school horror and so this is something that surprised me more than most is because this is a very competently uh, handled film and the competency is through the production levels I thought production wise it looked like it had quite a bit of money behind it and I just really liked the offbeat, quirky style that this movie takes. This is a film that doesn't have a lot of dialogue at all, so it's all about body language, and it's all about the psyche of this, the psyche of this guy as he's going through this mansion, and this mansion forming a character of its own. And so the character of this mansion was really played well through the, the way that the camera was used. There were some long, you know, zooming shots of this hallway that I thought was really, really uh, spooky and very off-putting. And there were some moments where... Yeah, whether it's something placed in the background of the film done very subtly which makes it even more scary and so the movie does have a very strong scary heart that actually took me by surprise I didn't really think as though this would be a film that would make me creep out would you know it, it actually sent a little bit of a chill down my spine and actually almost made me go for the light to turn it on and so if the movie does that then it's doing its job as far as what a horror film should be so the acting was good there are some very strange characters that come into the film it's very limited in its characters but when the characters come in it is very strange and it just creates that really strange world and that strange world is an, a, an insight into what this guy was going through and because you know that this guy was on edge you know that he was desperate is what's going on a figment of his imagination or not and so there's that uncertainty it's that Alfred Hitchcock approach where it's suspense and the suspense levels were used very very well this is a movie that does run on suspense and it's a movie that knows exactly what it is because it only goes for 70 minutes and obviously a movie that goes for two hours with this sort of approach 
approach wouldn't have worked because it would have become very boring. But none of this feels like filler because it doesn't have time to be filler. And so that was all very good. And it also has brutal scenes of violence that actually hit me hard. But the, the good thing about that is that those brutal scenes of violence were a consequence of the actions that were built up. And so they are there for a very strong reason, just uh, as opposed to being there just for the sake of being gory. And so it is a brutal film, but it does rely heavily on the psychological aspects of a man who is slowly descending into madness. And it's that visuals, you know, the dark visuals combined with the fantastic haunting soundtrack straight away gets you into the mood of something that is going to be very off-putting. And it's something that definitely took me by surprise coming from a movie of a country that I'm not familiar with. And so Ike Carapetium demonstrates fine abilities as far as creating a horror film is concerned, but unfortunately tries a little bit too much within the 70 minute runtime. Now this is a film that is convoluted and it does try, it bites off way more than it can chew and it starts to get a little bit too fancy for its own good and so it does convolute the process of this movie. And so there are things that happen in this film that don't make a lot of sense and after re-watching it I can kind of make sense of what was going on, but it makes you scratch your head a little bit too much for what the film is and what the film is is a 70 minute fun film. It's not a two hour film that's going to be like Michael Haneke that's going to make you scratch your head and really try to get under the themes of the film. This is a film that doesn't take itself seriously, that is very subtle and very simplistic but unfortunately gets a little bit too complicated towards the end and it makes you scratch your head in all the wrong ways because it doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense and it made me believe that maybe it was thrown in there just for the sake of being a little bit different but if you're going to pull the rug from under someone just for the sake of it, it doesn't work, it comes off as a pretentious uh, action and that pretentious action in this film really wasn't needed because it was a lot more simplistic. As I said, it's really a, an experience that you go through with the senses as opposed to actually really using your brain as far as you know this sort of horror is concerned. But pushing that aside, it's still a very, a very interesting film that I would highly recommend. It is very well made. It appears that a lot of love has been put behind it. I thought, as I said, everything about the movie is very quirky. The acting performances were good, but it really relies on the body language and the psychology of someone who's lost their mind and may or may not be in direct danger. So if it sounds like your kind of thing, go out there and see this film. For a first Latvian horror film, I thought it was a very, very good attempt. I'm going to give The Man in the Orange Jacket three stars. Alright guys, this is my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time you watch your movies and I'll see you later.